So good evening, everybody. Welcome to tonight's Top Talk session. Hi, Michelle. I know you're there because I just heard you laughing at me. As if I would. <laughs> good evening. <laughs> Great to have you back with us. I really love it. Looking forward to this. This was, uh, before we get right into it, though, I don't, um, it might be part of your presentation, but just give us a little bit. Of, obviously, you're our resident macro specialist, but uh, this was a personal project that turned into your associate panel. Is that right? Yes. Yes. Um, Yes, what happened was is I was initially looking to do something for a fellowship for my macro, but I wasn't quite sure what to do. And um, as I, I will go through in the presentation, a few things happened and suddenly I ended up doing portraits, which is something I don't normally do. Um, but uh, yes, I ended up doing a bit of all sorts and put this through as an associate portrait panel. Excellent. Well, we, we loved it when we saw it. And uh, then you contacted us and said, uh, well, I've done it. As a, I've got this presentation. Would you like to, to share it with, uh, with the Academy? And we went, yes, please. So that's why we have you uh, online with us tonight. Michelle, obviously, we like you, you like people to interact with you. So I've put links there to your uh, Facebook page and, uh, and your website. And again, I'll share these out with the members tonight. So um, I'm going to hand you the screen. Love. It's coming over to you now. I'll let you know when we can uh, see it. Just while we're waiting for the screen to, to come live there, guys, um, just remember, please, we want you to interact with us tonight. So any questions you have for Michelle, please pop them through the question panel. I'll submit them where appropriate. As I said, we've allowed plenty of time. Michelle, I can see the screen nice and clear. I can hear you loud and clear. It's all yours. Excellent. Thank you very much. Um, well, first of all, thank you for uh, having me back for what is now the third webinar. Um, it's good to be here. And thank you to everybody for um, giving up their um, Monday evenings on what is a very nice night outside. Um, as Jay said earlier, um, I initially started to look at this as um, a fellowship qualification panel um, and then switched subjects part way through and it ended up becoming a portrait panel which I submitted to the SWPP in January 2015 and uh, successfully passed. I also run the advisory days for the RPS in Bath and one of the um, advisors one day said to me well if you've you know you've got your associate with the SWPP why haven't you put it through for the RPS? And I thought, well, yeah, OK, good point. But I didn't want to put exactly the same panel in. Um, I've now actually got three associate panels, uh, three associate qualifications, and each one of them is different. And I'm, I'm quite proud of that fact. Um, makes it a bit harder for when I do go for my fellowship, I guess. So what I've done here is put some thoughts behind how I went about doing the panel. Um, and some of the images are from the first panel that I finished and most of them are from the second panel that I finished. Um, the reason I changed them was because I wasn't entirely happy with the way that they sat with the backgrounds and stuff, um, so redid them. So the first thing I'm going to show you is the 15 images for the RPS associate panel and as they're playing through, um, instead of some boring background music for you to listen to, I will actually read out my statement of intent. Um, although the images are obviously important, the statement of intent also has to match what you're um, trying to achieve. And sometimes I think it's a bit like a science experiment when you have to write down the method. It helps you to zone in and define exactly what you are trying to do in your panel. And it keeps you on kind of a straight path. So if I just get this going. And go. She says. Hopefully it will take over now in automatic. Um, yes, it will. Right. So my inspiration for this set of images is born from my personal enthusiasm for entomology, wildlife photography, the allure of the Victorian curiosities and the desire to step out of my ever so predictable comfort zone and to create something a little extraordinary. To me, photography heaven is insects coupled with a macro lens. But for this qualification, I wanted to challenge myself to photograph something completely different. So I chose people. But the lure of the insects was too great. Motivated by John Merrick and the film Elephant Man, I decided to create my own set of curiosities. 
responsibilities combining the two subjects. However, I didn't want my images to be a series of morphs. So to prevent the insects from becoming people and vice versa, I've tried to give an additional twist by presenting each of my ladies with a, distinct, a distinctive fashion look to complete the illusion of familiarity. And just as we come to the end, oh, nearly, nearly perfect timing. I do apologize. So these are the 15 images that I submitted um, in October last year and uh, gained my third associate qualification. So there you go. So this is what we're going to be looking at tonight. Um, uh, let's skip into the next one and start this evening's viewing. Right, so what I'm going to be looking at is obviously my inspiration, where I was uh, going and what my head was doing, or not as the case may be, um, where I got the insects from and how I photographed them, um, looking for models, creating the images, um, planning and styling each shoot, and then I've done a very, very brief bit on putting it together obviously time constricts so I can't go into show to Photoshop and you know do anything major so it's just a few bits of how I've done things I was actually watching um, Elephant Man um, at the time and it struck me uh, um, how much the Victorians are still uh, um, inspirational in our in our society today and you know right the way through to the films what I was actually thinking of at the time was, you know, they had the freak shows, they brought back, they, you know, they went on large explorations, they brought the freak shows back. Um, I'm an avid gardener. Uh, uh, they went out as plant hunters and collectors, brought new plants and species back to us. And obviously with those species came the attached insects and bugs. Um, so a lot of the insects that we see now and take for granted um, Many of them are recent-ish additions that have been brought over with the plants. I've also, as many people know, um, got, well, the love of entomology, on, obviously, and the insects, but I've also got some of my own little insects. And as you can see on the top uh, right there is my ghost mantis. Um, and he played an important part in, in this thought process as well. Film industry has a habit over the last 50 plus years of trying to morph insects and people, whether it's through the DC and Marvel films giving us Batman, Wolverine, Spider-Man, or whether it goes back further to King Kong trying to make him look human. And the one that sort of crossed my mind particularly was uh, Ridley Scott and Alien. Now, the ghost mantis was originally one of his inspirations for the alien head look-alike. And you can see, just by looking at it, the, the, um, the top piece of the head and where he got that from. So wherever we go in today's society, we are still influenced greatly by what the Victorians brought to us and obviously what the films industry is doing. Because even now they're producing cartoons like Monsters Inc. and in this one Monsters University, where you've got Dean Hardscrabble um, as a uh, millipede come bat. I'm not quite sure what the head is supposed to be. So it led me to thinking, well, instead of doing just people or just insects, then why not try and create my own set of curiosities? And that's what I decided to do. So the first thing I, I, decided, I wanted to get sorted was the insects. Um, and, I did, and I wanted to, um, well, the reasons for that were twofold. First of all, I needed to see how they moved. I needed to to see um, how they would shoot um, so that when I came to doing the models then I, I would be able to sort of like try and um, simulate the movements and the, the poses, not the poses but their, uh, their posture. So first of all I had a number of live insects that I um, could obtain quite easily so there was the um, praying mantis um, I used my, my tarantula Cynthia, so please be aware um, there will be a spider appearing at some point later in time, so this is your early warning spider alert. 
Um, uh, my friend's got some millipedes, so I use one of the millipedes, and I've, you know, with the flowers and stuff I grow in the garden, I was also able to use one or two moths that were a little docile for um, first thing in the morning after the night out. But the, 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 uh, get my teeth in, sorry. The next lot of insects came from um, eBay. <clears throat> There's a surprise. It's amazing what you can find on that place. Taxidermy insects was my search term. And I actually bought quite a lot of the insects and a couple of the moths from uh, World of Butterflies and Moths. The guy there, Jason's really helpful. I had one that was damaged, give him a call, no problem. He sent one out the following day and told me how to repair the one that was damaged. Um, brilliant guy. And I go back, I have been back to him a couple of times since. So when I was shooting the the dead insects, um, I shot them on a white or grey background and I shot them overhead. Um, the reason being is sort of kind of obvious because I wanted their bodies to be looking at me as though they were human-like standing up. But as I said, I didn't want them to become human. So as you'll see, I, I've kept a lot um, as natural shaped as possible. But because they were dead, I couldn't sort of really shoot them head on or in different positions. And obviously with the beetles and things being such a hard case, um, they weren't very flexible to move anyway. But um, they kind of worked, they kind of worked. The ones that were alive, again, I kept them on a white or a gray background, making it easier to cut them out later. Um, and I also shot them inside a light tent so that they didn't go flying off or in Cynthia's case running off although she was ever so good bless her um, and said the white and the grey makes it easier to cut them out later on so the models uh, makeup artists hair people there's a number of places that um, you can find them the most popular one is the model site Purple Port. Um, quite often, you, uh, if, you, if you're putting images up, you're only allowed so many for free. But after that, you know, you, you need to pay, I think it's about £30 a year, something like that. Um, not bad. You need to be careful what you're looking for. Um, there are various ranges and levels of um, both models and makeup artists. Um, it's horses for courses, that one. There are a number of local Facebook groups. If you go and have, if you go and search, um, a couple of local ones to me, for example, are Gloucestershire Photographers, Models, and MUAs. That's the one there is for the socials. They have got a closed group, I think, for organising shoots um, between themselves. Another one is Bristol Models. I think there's one in Wiltshire as well, but I can't remember the name of it off the top of my head. Another source is friends and relatives. Some of the people actually in this um, panel, one's my niece and one's my husband's goddaughter. So, you know, they are not professional models by any stretch of the imagination, but they were quite willing to get in front of a camera for me. And uh, I think they were more intrigued on in what I was going to turn them into rather than doing the shoot itself. I then set about, once I had sort of like the, the idea of the models in place and the insects I wanted to use, I then needed to spend quite a bit of time planning and styling how I was going to do the panel as a whole. Um, I'd already decided that I didn't want the insects to be human and I didn't want the humans to become um, insects, hence the reason I gave them a fashion theme. But by the same token, I didn't want each theme for, or sorry, the theme to be the same for every single insect. So I had to go about planning um, a theme for each insect and also to match the models with that insect to make that theme look right. And I used mood boards a lot for that. And obviously I had to think a lot about the costumes and the props. So a couple of the themes I came up with were, as you can see, the, the 20s, steampunk, uh, dominatrix, Ascot Henley. 
um, the sexy, sultry kind of look, a warrior, Greek, Victorian theme, which I thought suited this because it was, you know, down to a, a Victorian inspiration that started me off on this tract in the first place. And here's what I mean. This, some of the themes jump at you and others aren't quite so obvious. And here you can see what I mean. This cicada um, across the top here is, is like a breastplate. And you can see like a Neptune fork on, on the front there. And, and straight away that kind of said to me, okay, this is a body armor. The, the, embla the, the markings on the front is like a banner. Um, it, it screamed tribal, it screamed warrior. And when we were shooting it, it looked a little bit like luster. Threw a few swords in there, samurai swords in there and the whole thing just seemed to click together. So we went with kind of an Aztec warrior look with this one. Some of the moths and butterflies, um, because they're all very similar, it would have been too easy to have decided that each of them was going to be a ball gown, um, evening gown, fashion type look. Um, sort of along a high class route if um if you know what i mean sort of you know that really going out where so for this one instead of um going quite over the top i went a little bit more subtle and we went for what i called um a henley regatta kind of look you know the twin set type with the pearls but she's got the little um what's the thingy in her hair yep one of them and you know I, th I wanted this one sort of toned down a little bit I think it would have been too easy to get carried away with all of them coming out with um, a very similar look so as I said earlier as well as matching the insects um, with the theme it also helped to, to match the models with the insects and theme as well um, for example, uh, not quite so much on this one. Yeah, the angel, for example, here. Um, Hannah's kind of slightly blonde or more blonde, although it's a bottle than than any of the others. And I think because it was a white plume moth and she was wearing some white um, some faux fur to match the body of the actual moth. I think if I'd have put a dark haired person in there, it wouldn't quite have worked as much as a blonde. And as you can see over we hear another of the evening gang looks. Again, um, we've got the matching with the the big hair, the rough at warrior look. Um, Hannah's kind of this smooth, not quite matching, I guess, in some ways with the army camouflage, but it, it matched the insect completely. Whoops, where have I gone? And likewise, as I was saying with Hannah, Harry down here, her hair is so red, it's beautiful. But I don't think that she would have carried off, well, I know she wouldn't have carried off the pink look. Whereas matching her with the Uganda beetle and the orangeness of it, um, it was just perfect. This one, I had no hesitations in um, putting Roseanne with this particular insect. Um, I knew that she would be able to carry off the look without me giving her any direct, only, ver only being able to see me verbally kind of thing, the verbal directions. Um, but as you can see up here, she just pulls it anyway. So when planning a big project like this, sometimes you get so many ideas and you get them all at once. And I'm sure, in fact, I know I'm not the only one that has those three o'clock in the morning. You know, your eyes are wide awake, your brain's gone into overtime. And the next thing you know is it's six o'clock in the morning and you've got to get up in an hour or so to go to work. Um, and for instead of just writing my ideas down, I found Pinterest. I'd never used it before, um, but somebody said to me, have you ever used, why don't you try? So off I went. Now, a lot of people use Pinterest for, um, if, if they're sort of decorating and they're looking for ideas for their own rooms. 
or people might um, use it to uh, put links through to things that they're trying to sell. Personally, I found it invaluable as a brain dumping ground and as a source of ideas. Um, I created 20 boards, one for each of the initial insects, and on each board I had things like hair, makeup, um, potential poses, different things that the costumes could be. Um, so one of the things that you'll you'll probably have recognised already, we've got Nicole. She had the choker on. She was wearing um, this particular corset, and that was the insect that she went with. And we went for a makeup that was very similar, um, not quite the same, but it was similar-ish to to that one. Now this particular board um, is one where I'd put everything after I'd finished the project, but I think it gives you the idea of how I was actually using it. So I had 20 boards for 20 insects, each um, showing a, var a variation of things. Each of the models was invited to join the board that they were involved with. I had the makeup artists involved as well. So we could all see um, way ahead of time roughly what we were talking about, what sort of look we were going to go for, and you know how things would look on the day itself. I also had a couple of other boards. Now, as many of you know, I shoot macro, I shoot insects. I don't generally shoot people. People are alien to me. Um, and so the thought of huh, the thought of shooting models fills me with dread, even now, even after doing all you know the whole of this panel. Um, I don't sleep the night before. Or I get up feeling physically sick um, and yeah it is just a world of dread so to help me along my I'm along my way you know even though my husband's um, a portrait photographer and I'm sure he would have helped if I'd have well I know he would have helped um, I felt as though because I was going for a qualification it had to be everything was me um, and because I'd made things in many ways harder because I was shooting insects, most of them were dead, therefore they were all front facing. So I couldn't go off just saying, yeah, pose here, there and there, and I'll just pick up the pictures I need. I had to be very specific in the poses that I got, um, in that they had to be all forward facing. Um, so, so what I did is I created a pose board, and then depending on which insect I was shooting, I'd actually um, print some of the pictures off and have them stuck up in the studio on the walls and said and say to the model look this is the sort of thing I want this is what the insect looks like um, and this is what I want to try and recreate and, and we managed to do that the post board also came in useful for um, matching things to insects so for example um, this sitting down image um, on, on the left gave me the perfect-ish um, kind of pose for Kiri on the right here to replicate for the sexy and sultry tarantula. Um, I wanted you know, the spider to look completely different. I didn't want it to be one of those scary runaway things, so I wanted it to be sultry, and so we had Kiri in a basque, and the pose on the stool there with the way her leg is up which is what gave me the idea of looking at the one on the left enabled me to um, to create this and as I said this is you know it was a good thing that I had done the insects first because I was able to see which way they moved or if they were dead which way they they, they were positioned um, and I could then match the poses to the insects themselves I also had a floppy hat board um, there's one that you saw earlier on with the elephant hawk moth um, and I thought well how am I going to do this but because I'd previously on, a, on another shoot done the um, the damselfly with the eyes I thought okay because I have got one image with no eyes it should be okay to put in more than one image with no eyes so I decided I was going to use something similar to this and created the image on the right 
with the hat covering her eyes completely. I think it worked. So Pinterest to me was something that was totally new, but I was able to sort of dump all my ideas over my 20 plus boards. And then each as each shoot came along, I could refer back to them. And it was an easy thing to keep a tab on. A bit like setting the budget. Um, I did, decided I did need to obviously keep it under control. Um, it would have been easy to have get lost on eBay and spent masses and masses of things I didn't really need. So I set myself a budget of under £250. Bearing in mind that does not include the printing of the finished panel. So this was just to do the project itself. Um, and I did that by trying to keep things as simple as, as possible. I used eBay quite a lot. I also used charity shops as well. That was another good source of um, props and costume. And there were a number of items that I obviously used more than once. Uh, um, and the best thing is to use your imagination and improvise using things around you. Um, and it is too easy to forget that and just keep on spending. So the costumes and props that I used, well, there was obviously a lot of uh, fabrics. And as you've seen, there was quite a few corsets. Um, the corsets were uh, 199 I think they were, from China. Agreed, they took six weeks to get to me. But because I'd planned ahead using my boards, um, I ordered a black, a white, and the gold one. And I was able able to use each of those on well two or three occasions each um, so they more than paid the, for themselves so as I said although they took a time to get to me because I'd forward planned they were available when I needed them uh, the other most of the other um, insects were clothed if you want to use the word um, using fabric and I'll come to that in just in, in just a minute to give them from the fashion accessory look, then I needed um, some hats and gloves. Now, as we run um, a portrait and boudoir studio, uh, we had a number of hats and gloves, so I didn't really need to fork out too much on that, although I did need, uh, well, I didn't need to, but I did get a few fascinators and a few small hat type things. And again, with the additional accessories, a f quite a few bits were um, in, in the uh, studio already. So here we've got um, six images, as you can see. Um, and each of these images has one thing in common. And that is that all the girls are wearing is one meter of fabric. Cost $1.99 per meter. So as you can see, I've done six different ways and on this occasion the same fabric is used twice um, but as you can see I've come up with six different ways and I'm sure there's plenty of other ways out there as well so each of these costumes believe it or not is really really cheap so we'll start with this one so we've got 199 on the fabric and I, I think it was 350 for the fascinator 199 for the necklace so we're, we're talking of seven pounds fifty for this one um, the other thing I should mention at this point is that when I was photographing the girls, they all had um, either a bra, or, uh, not a bra, they were all um, semi-naked, if, if you like, from the waist upwards because I knew all the insects were going to be covering the bottom halves, so I just asked them to wear black leggings. Again, this is another way of keeping the cost down. Um, so, as I said, moving on to Harry here, we've just got... Um, wrap around the neck, tied it around the back, and then a hair bobble just tying into the middle there to scoop it up. So this costume was $1.99. Uh, we already had the necklace, so the fascinator, the hair piece here, the hair band was about £8, with the £2 for the fabric, £10 for this costume. A bit more for this one, it was, I think it was about £8 for the hat. Um, and the gloves I bought as well. We didn't have no long black gloves in the studio. Um, so £12 for this one. £2 for this one, as we already had the hat and the necklace. 
this one was the most expensive costume out of the whole lot and probably you know well nearly as much as all of these together Roseanne actually is wearing a 32A black bra on her head covered in approximately 500 cones which took me 10 hours to make and a few drops of blood later um, but I think the, the result is well worth it we had fun games trying to keep it on her head with obviously the silk over the top of her head as the satin across the top of her head but the total for that particular eyepiece on its own was about 27 pounds um, plus the fabric plus the two amulets which were about 350 each so this one was sort of like 35 40 pounds um, but I think the effect on it is really really worth it um, I'm really, really pleased with the way that one turned out but again as I said all it is is a few pieces of fabric um, twisted and pulled and don't forget nappy pins um, bulldog clips clamps whatever they're your friend just pin them or, or answer safety pins you know normal pins just pin them all together rearrange it all and yeah you're good to go so just a little bit then on putting the images together um, like I said earlier I've not gone into a great deal of detail with this um, because we don't have time to go through Photoshop and putting it all together as is so the Uganda beetle uh, Harry on the left as you can see it's a plain black corset she's got a black choker on um, and because the beetle is a hard shelled creature it was quite easy to match if I can see that yeah it's quite easy as you can see just on here as her body comes up and what I did was use the uh, gradient tool just to merge the, the top of the body down and blend it into the top of the beetle can take a little bit of time you know do it more than once um, and kind of just making sure that the edges all match in but overall this particular one didn't take too long to put together so it's quite a simple with the gradient tool this is the elephant hawk moth um, the hawk moth itself actually um, I found the cocoon in the garden put it in the conservatory and forgot about it and then it actually hatched in the conservatory so I popped it into the light tent took several hundred photographs of it and then um, put it outside on the fuchsia bushes for it to uh, to go and be an adult um, but the pink on this one is what gave me the color inspiration with the the, the hat that we had in the studio um, it's one that the kids like dressing up in so to give it a little bit more of an elegant look um, going along the cream lines I put in a pearl necklace with it and as you can see we've got some fabric going on which is um, safety pinned at the back this one was a little bit more um, complicated to put together in that what I did is I put um, Kiri on top and took a piece from here as a separate layer and then I um, using the blend mode put it onto multiply so I don't know if you can see properly there but you can just see the hair starting to come through onto the top making it look as though the top is actually um, furry itself in instead of that that uh, shiny satin look and I think it actually blends in quite nicely the colors so the millipede this is probably one of the more the most difficult ones that there was um, to do we actually had um, my friend Sharon's millipede for the afternoon um, and we used the casing of biro and took obviously the the middle piece with the ink out and as the millipede was moving about John was um, trying to curl it around the biro so that I could get some shots of it upright and I knew I wanted it going backwards on me but I also wanted it to be curled if possible 
So this to me was the perfect curl at the bottom, and this bit was the curl, the, the arced back that I was looking for. Um, I think I should have brought it down a little bit lower there, but I was quite happy with the way that the actual, um, it merged together. So it was basically putting one over the top of the other and then um, using a mask layer, just brushing away the pieces that I didn't want and then just bringing some legs back in again. So to merge it all together, we've got uh, Roseanne here and the millipede, the merged version. And then as you can see, Again, this was all possible because I'd already taken the pictures of the millipede and I said to Roseanne, what I like is sort of like that C shape, you know, leaning back and the millipede as though it's rearing up. Um, and I showed her the picture that I'd created of the millipede and I said, this is what I want to fit you to. And believe it or not, the picture of Roseanne on the left is the second one of the shoot. Again, as I said, it's all down to your models. If you know your models and they know what they're at and you can and talking to them. And I found that by showing them the insects that I wanted them to be, they could become it, if, if that makes not perfect sense, but I think you all know what I mean. So that was Roseanne. Again, not quite sure which way we were going to go with that one. So we gave it a kind of a Greek, um, a Greek, ancient Greek look. So, how much did it cost? I'm sure one or two of you are asking. Well, there you go, £184. So, I came in well below my budget of £250. Um, and I think I've got some nice pictures out of it. And the RPS were more than happy with it. Um, they've kept the panel for a show and tell, so others can go and look at it. Um, I've done a couple more since. Um, as I said, I changed the original ones from the, um, uh, what shall I call that, a sort of, they were all of a darker background that were all very similar and the colours were to match the insects. And I, I, although they were okay, I was never 100% happy with the backgrounds. So for the RPS panel, I changed all the backgrounds through um, and I've done things like this. Um, on this one, this is my uh, Versailles butterfly. Um, and I've given it sort of the, the leaves on the corner and I've given it a crackled white background. Um, and as you saw on the, um, the slideshow right at the beginning, each of them now has a completely different look to what they had originally. And I've gone through that quicker than I thought I would. So that's it. Well, that's okay, because we have a few questions for you anyway, so don't worry about it. Oh, dear. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, they're all good. It's all good. Um, well, actually, uh, well, first off the bat, I, I, I'd seen some of those images, but I hadn't seen all of those images, so there's some absolute stuff in there. Uh, for people who don't know, and I'm sure Michelle will take great pleasure in telling people, I have a huge, huge fear of spiders. And it's the spider alert. <laughs> yes, thank you. I did appreciate that. And uh, I haven't got it with me to share with you guys, but the very first thing, one of the first things that Michelle ever sent me was a fantastic image that you took of a spider eating an ant, I believe it is. But I think you actually put mm -hmm. it, it's not a picture of a spider, it's a picture of an ant being eaten by a spider. So yeah, <laughs> That's thanks, right. Thanks that. But I still have it, it's pride and joy, and I'm getting better with spiders. And I did get to meet uh, Cynthia in person, which was, uh, which was great uh, joy to me. Uh, when when I came to visit and film with you before, so thank you for that. I'm getting That's better. Right, yeah. I'm getting better with spiders. Getting better with spiders. Uh, okay, so the questions, love, are not in any particular order. Um, okay. Obviously, a few people were asking, and obviously, I knew it was coming about how you uh, created the images. We did discuss that. Uh, unfortunately, the webinar system seems like we're having a little bit of a drain problem. So, if we tried to do Photoshop tonight, it probably would have killed us, to be honest. But I believe um, that you've already talked about with Sam about doing an actual putting together film, isn't it, uh, yes. of, of the images. So we're going to be doing that very soon, guys. So we'll, we'll get that up on the Academy for you. But uh, ultimately, it, you, you're a Photoshop user, so you talked about everything that you did within Photoshop. Quite simple, quite simple techniques, really, I think, which is, what, what, which is quite nice as well, right? Yes. Yes. There was a few liquefied just to push the insects into sort of meet the girls' shapes and stuff with various ones. But yes, they were all um, quite simple and quite basic. Excellent. Um, well. The one question 
that uh, came up a couple of times was obviously we talked about, you talked about the budget for the project, we're going to talk about that again in a minute. Um, what was the kind of total period of the first panel then? What was the first length of time from sort of idea to finish? Um, actually, that one took quite a long time um, because of various other influences. Um, for example, um, there was a house move involved, um, not mine, but somebody else that was involved in the project, um, and then it fell through, then it sold, and then it was going through again, and so there were periods where we didn't do anything because obviously I didn't want to book in time when the person may not be available. So. Um, uh, I suppose the, the the idea came about round about the March time, um, and <laughs> the last picture was printed the day before we left London. <laughs> um, another person wasn't available right at the end, and we st I still had two more images to shoot, and that's when my niece Hannah stepped up to the plate. Um, and we shot that on the 28th of December, and I processed it through on New Year's Day, I think it was. Um, we were due to go up to London on something like the 5th or the 6th of January, because it was early that year. So, um, yeah, we were literally printing it and framing it. I think we printed it the weekend, and we framed it about the night before it went up. So we're talking about nine months altogether, but there were a lot of gaps in between kind of frustratingly but at the same time I was able to sort of pull other bits together to get things moving so I didn't leave it all to the last minute thankfully brilliant so okay so that obviously this was something that you had planned did you always did you always think that it was going to be an associate panel or, or a submission anyway I was hoping it would turn into a submission yes and then as I was doing it, it became more and more obvious that, yes, it was totally different. Let's put it in and see what the reaction is. Brilliant. Um, actually, somebody's asked, and I think this is a really good question Mark, while we're talking about it. I mean, you mentioned in, in the, uh, the beginning, this is your third associate panel. Is that right? Yeah, yes. Yeah, okay. So uh, for somebody, uh, and obviously has posed the question, who's not familiar with the process, uh, you, because uh, all the panels are themed differently, is that right? Is that why you've, you've submitted three? Yes. Yes. The first one I submitted was a science and nature one, which consisted a lot of frogs, reptiles, um, and th those sorts of insects. The second one was um, the portrait one, which was, you've seen most of it, but they all had the same backgrounds on. And then the RPS one was um, put into what they call the creative category. Um, and that's where I did all the fancy background or the fancier background work, which is the ones that you saw at the beginning of the, uh, the session. Great. So you could say the last two are similar in that the, the, the models and the insects were the same, but the backgrounds were changed so much it made them look completely different, I think. Uh, in fact, you can see it's gone from, they've gone from there to there. Yeah. Actually, while, while we're there, do you want to just jump back to that millipede image for us, uh, please? That will be the next question. Yep. So um, we had a few questions uh, <laughs> about, about the models and makeup in general. Um, but this, this, the makeup yep. uh, on your model here, this was done in advance, is, or, or have you done that afterwards in Photoshop? This one was in advance. So this so is that all, was done is, by a makeup artist. Brilliant. Yes. So was there a combination? Some of them weren't done that way. So were some of them done in Photoshop afterwards? Yes. Some of them, yes. Some of them. There was, um, as I said, Hannah, my niece, stepped up over Christmas. Um, the makeup artist wasn't available. Um, I couldn't get hold of her at all um, from November onwards. So in the end, Hannah said, "Right, I'll come round," um, and she just put on a basic eyeliner and some lipstick, and then I created the makeup um, in Photoshop afterwards. Great. Um, well, that poses one of the um, questions. I, so, sorry, go on. No, sorry. Yeah, what I was going to say is that's one of the film, one of the um, one of the film things that Sam and I have already discussed. So he's coming down in, 
in May and we're going to do a shoot which will involve um, Roseanne and an insect and I'm not going to say what, what we're going to be doing um, but we're going to follow that through from shoot right the way through to production um, using the, uh, the, the screen capture stuff but I'm also going to do a short film on um, makeup retouching so right. that will be covered in that one. Excellent, great. Um, so staying on the staying on uh, the questions about the models. So obviously we talked uh -huh. about we talked about your budget. Obviously you had a two hundred and fifty pound budget. You came in under budget. Uh, I presume that doesn't count for any models fees. Are all the guys that we've seen today, all the models that we've seen today, have they done it for time for images, or were you paying yeah. them? So, so no, nope, all time, pay. all time for. That's excellent. So just because they were generally interested in the project or a few models that you've worked with yes. in the past? or Both. both, both. Um, I'd worked with a couple of them, um, Joe and Roseanne before, and um, as I said, our goddaughter has done some bits for John before, and Hannah, my niece, has done some a bit, a bit before, so they, they were all up for nothing. Um, and then I broached the others, and I told them what the project was, and yeah, they jumped at it Brilliant. because it was so different. Yeah, no, I agree, and I think uh, you know from our experiences, when you pitch something like this, that you know you will get the models that you need, and you don't necessarily have to spend money on them. Does that did that also go for the for the makeup artist? Yes. Yeah. So it, it, great because it was different, right? Because normally, if you were just going for your normal sort of fashion makeup, the makeup artist would probably want to get paid, but this is yeah. is equally as important to them for the likes of their portfolios and things like that, isn't yeah. it? So when you when you yes. do have something like that, much much easier to obtain. Brilliant. I wanted just want I knew that was going to be the answer, but I wanted to get that um, sort of shape. Yeah. So I'm just taking a few of these off. We've done that one. That one's that one. We've done the one about the makeup reel off Photoshop. We've done that one. Uh, we had a couple of questions about. Um, obviously, you told that you have to print these uh, for submission, uh, and then you mentioned that they're also framed. Are they all framed when you submit the panel? Mounted, yes. Mount, oh, mounted. Okay. So they're all in it. Yep. So each of the images I created them as fifteen by tens and mounted them in twenty by sixteen um, mounts. Okay. Uh, do you favour a particular type of paper? Did you go for anything fine art or different or uh, out there for those? Yes. I'm glad you mentioned that. Actually, yes. <laughs> with the um, with the RPS ones. Oops, where, where, they're, where they're all on this kind of a background. Um, I use the, FB, uh, the Permajet FB Silk paper um, because it gave some of the images, particularly the ones with the wings on and this one as well, it was a slight sparkle to it and it just made those eyes and the, the wings shimmer. Pure and simple. Excellent. No, brilliant. Perfect. Uh, I just whereas if they'd have been on a if they'd have been on a matte rag type paper, I don't think they'd have looked as good. But because there was a lot of um, I suppose you could say like gold bits in it, without it being gold gold, the paper added to the colours. So these images, actually, one of the other questions that came through uh, about the specific images was what well, she mentioned: what size you printed them at? Uh, are, are you working on the big enough files that if you wanted to, you could print them even bigger? Yeah, cool. Excellent. That's yes, the kind of the yes. question was how you know how big are the files that you're working on, or are they being limited to the size of print? But um, so you, no, so you, I think they're well, yeah, kind of. They're about four four eighty by four four thousand eight hundred by three thousand six hundred or something like that. So yeah, they could be printed bigger. Excellent. Um, sorry, I've got myself mixed up on my questions. Oh, the whole panel. Is there anywhere that it can yes. be seen online at all? Because obviously we've only seen uh, inserts tonight and we've only seen um, sort of some of them have been cropped and that. Is there somewhere, does the RPS show them off online or? No, no, I did blog them some time back um, on my website, but the RPS hasn't put them up yet. They were on about putting them up on their website at some point. Um, they have... Um, uh, what do they call it, a, a, a distinctions portfolio so people yeah. can go and see what's passed and what hasn't passed and they were on about putting it up on there but as far as I'm aware it's not gone up yet. Can we share it? If you like. Yeah, no, I'd like to. People seem to like <laughs> to see them. So, um, yeah, if, well, if you send them over to me we can either put it on our blog or we can 
Facebook it okay. for people to see. That'd be great. Sure. Yeah, love to see them. No problem. Excellent. Brilliant. We'll get that sorted then. So whoever asked that question, we'll get that sorted straight away. Um, so with the, ex okay, so this was quite interesting and this came up a few times though. Um, obviously this was a personal project. There's a reason that, you know, you did this, you wanted to challenge mm -hmm. yourself. I know that we're familiar with your, your, your macro, your bugs and, and your level uh, uh, and your macro photography and you challenged yourself with, with shooting people. Um, yeah. Was it just a personal project? Do you see it as something that you could market? And if so, how? Probably, but I've not thought about it. Um, it was a personal project just for me. Um, you know, you, you asked earlier on about um, the way that it was shot with the models and stuff, and it was all done TF. Well, they all had contact sheets of everything that was on the, the grey or the white, um, and then they, choose, they chose which, which images they wanted. These particular ones, um, I must admit, I never actually offered them complete um, in full, or as in the full sizes, um, because it was a personal project and I not had any thoughts or anything about actually, um, you know, selling them on. I'm not sure there would be a market for them. I don't know. Uh, well, I, I, I sat here thinking about it while while listening. I must say, I've seen some of the images in 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 the past, and and actually the, those kind of questions they came up quite early, and I. I think um, you know the the principles here. Like you've taken a very fashion uh, orientated route to it, so you've obviously had that in your head. So I think there's definitely something that I think it's done. You know these kind of projects, whether it's you know in Michelle's case insects and her, you know her love of the macro photography that she's she's combined the two. You know these are the things that people will you know if you're trying to stand out. If you're putting your your folio out there looking for work, you know, I, I think this would work in a in a fashion thing. Would would it would it work in a in a fine art print? Yeah, I think it probably would. But then obviously you're not talking about selling loads of them, but and it's also getting it in the right place at the right time. But I think there are definitely marketable opportunities. But it's not going to make you living. I don't want well, unless you become no 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 unless you know you become the next big ranking and they go oh you know what uh, yeah that's what we want. I there. have wondered about I have wondered about putting them out to um, a gallery or something like that um, because that's the thing with when you're working on a project like this you know my end project was you know going for a qualification but equally everything that I've discussed tonight could be if somebody is looking at putting on say an exhibition or going to an art gallery with a series of work or a body of work you know all, all the things that I've dis discussed tonight particularly the Pinterest thing for banging your ideas down excuse me and maybe yes maybe these could go that direction well, I don't I, know I know I think you and I have talked about what it to think about yeah I think you I don't know I think we might have talked about this in the past I, I, I don't have any on display at the moment but in my local uh, I'm very lucky that I know somebody who loan, uh, owns a, a local antique emporium and they have a wall that they sell people's art and photographs from now I, I have a, a so uh, a, a, an infrared uh, you know section on this wall and they're only a4 prints that I'm printing you know and they're, they're well they're not even a4 they're square that I buy the, the frames from Ikea uh, and I sell probably well I haven't like I said they've run out and I need to get him some more but I might sell two or three a month but they're a hundred pound each so you know I, I, and I'm not actively you know I should be more active with it but I could see these images Michelle on this uh, it's easy for me to say because I've seen this wall but there are different artists on this wall there are different photographers on this wall mm. uh, in this emporium and the emporium is selling them they're taking 20 pounds so they're doing all the work and they just give me a call and say Jay we need some more and actually he called me about a few weeks ago and I need to get down there with some more for him so that, I mean you know we're not talking about Shame it on you. I know I'm <laughs> terrible well I work for Mark so I'm too busy but, uh, <laughs> but no I will I, you know I've got some you know Easter's coming I'll have a few days off and I'll get to Ikea and buy some frames but you know so you know there is there is opportunities there but I think for portfolios these are the sort of things that you should be challenging yourself and I think it's well how much fun did you have out of it you know you, you pushed yourself right you enjoyed it I, I know you did you've told me I I actually I just I uh, yeah it was it was quite a journey actually I discovered quite a bit about myself um I learned that I really do hate photographing people um I also um through one or two things had to learn photo some parts of the photoshop pretty quickly um, like doing the the makeup um, 
and I kept it very basic, but I did it. Um, so I found new skills in myself. I found um, a different meaning in the way that my photography was going. Um, and um, although I didn't enjoy certain processes of it, I did enjoy other parts that overcame the first part, if you know what I mean. So for example, I've found a different level of Photoshop love. Um, quite a bit of what I've been doing since has been more Photoshop art orientated rather than photographing macro stuff. Oh, that's interesting. Okay. So I'm kind of, yeah, I'm kind of going off in a different tangent at the moment. It will probably all rain itself. Well, I know it will. Now that the spring's back out and the insects will be bombing around and the garden's beginning to... Um, you know, there's loads of stuff in the greenhouse ready to go out. So I know that I will be back out in the garden in the summer. But at the moment, this winter, I've done quite a little bit more um, what I'd call sort of still life fine art type stuff rather than um, what I normally do. And a lot of it has been um, heavily photoshopped in, in several ways. Brilliant. I mean, that's a good point, actually. Uh, Ted just chipped in, who um, asked one of the questions about the projects earlier. And I, I think he's absolutely right. He's nailed it. One of the best projects is one where in order to complete it, you have to learn new skills. So I think that's, you know, that, that's a really good point. You know, sometimes these things make you do things that yes. you're uncomfortable with and learn, like you said, you've learned new Photoshop skills, you've learned to work with people, which you, you know, you weren't comfortable with. And obviously you've decided that, you know, maybe you'll do some more, maybe you won't, but you've done it and you, and, and, and obviously, and uh, successfully got your associate panel as well. So obviously yes, there was, yes. there was a, a, a goal in that as well. Brilliant. Um, a couple yeah. of quick techy ones, uh, but we're almost there, love. Um, we talked about the, the papers that you use. Uh, are you using any kind of fancy printer? Somebody's asked. Uh, it's a bit of a, a nerdy question. Anything clever about it? What type of photo printer are you using? I don't know. It's a big it's, one. It'd be John's. <laughs> <laughs> you got it in one. <laughs> it's, a big can, it's a big Canon thing, and it takes rolls up to 24 inches. So, yeah, it's one of the... <laughs> That sounds so wrong. I'm sorry. That's not, no, that's um, fine. And, uh, you know, I, I, I knew John would have a big printer. I just knew. <laughs> <laughs> In fact, I think I've seen it. But uh, I'm sure we can find that out. But it, it's obviously, like you said, it's one of these things. It'll print up. It'll print huge. Anyway, so that's fine. Yes. Uh, yes. And obviously, you've um, already answered the question. I think, but obviously, all all yeah. in your own, all printed in house. Yes. Yes, so this one was actually done. We didn't get a roll in for this. We actually got um, a box of 50 sheets of A3 and we printed on that. Brilliant. So, uh, yeah. Uh, one of the things actually I thought was really interesting that you brought up and actually it was a good point you know you were talking about the budgets and you were talking about the costumes and obviously that um, even though it took six weeks you you bought from China um, it yes. is you know I presume that's probably eBay as well is it was it eBay the Chinese yes. sellers and eBay yes. you know the, yeah. the the guys, the, the, the costs are there, you know, it's, it, they cost nothing. Um, but as long as you factor, as Michelle said, you factor the time in for the delivery. I mean, we have four wedding dresses that here uh, that we bought from China. Uh, we've had them for about four years now, and they are absolutely amazing. And even down to that you could all, you could have them made to the size of your model if you knew all the sizes. You know, this was on eBay. Exactly. Uh, I think they were about £60 a piece, these wedding dresses. Well, they are absolutely, we have one that is scarlet red, which is absolutely incredible. Um, and we actually have a very gothic black, black one, which is stunning. And we've got two traditional white ones. So eBay is definitely nice. a source. And don't dismiss China. Um, but just like like Michelle said, oh. you know, look at the, look at the yeah, buyers and sellers reviews, obviously. And also because I knew that there was a possibility that they may get makeup or paint on body paint on them, one ninety nine it was kind of throwaway stuff. Um, you know, whereas if you were buying one in the UK for twenty, thirty pounds, you'd think twice about it. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know? yeah. And because we had that window of, you know, the move in, in May that then got put back until October and stuff. So because I knew I had a time frame from the time I sort of conceived it then I knew then that, you know, I wouldn't need them till June, July time. So ordering them in April was just right. Yeah. And that's just the thing to factor. I mean, to be honest, our dresses from China, I don't think they even took that long. They took a few weeks. But so just factor that in. Uh, and, but like I said, just, you know, like you do, it, I'm sure you do it, guys on eBay or anywhere that you buy from. Just check out the seller's reviews and things like that. And obviously the, the advantage of 
um, eBay is obviously you've got your PayPal guarantees anyway. So, uh, yes. but yeah, just factored in plenty of time on that. Brilliant. Uh, Michelle, that's all of the questions. Uh, loads of praise and thanks. Okay. So uh, another great, uh, you know, uh, I'd seen some of them. I hadn't seen them all, so I saw some great images. And yes, I'm warming to Cynthia. Uh, but do you again. want me to? <laughs> do you want me to flick through it again? That last one. The last. This one. Do you want me to oh, flick so through them again, just so that you can see them as it goes? Yeah, there that'd be go. good. Yeah. There we go. So as we're finishing off. So yeah, these are the ones that I put through for the RPS. As you can see, I've changed all the backgrounds, made them really sort of a lot brighter as such and more in some ways in tune with the insects like you saw the spider there this one with the steampunk things going on around the outside I think it suits the image more than the plain um, painted type background um, so we've got the 20s flapper girl we've got the dominatrix here um, and bearing in mind that when you panel them um, it helps if they kind of match and sit together properly so like you know you might have one at one end and one at the other end and what you do once you must do twice and all that sort of thing but that's a completely different story <laughs> so there's my uh, damselflies you can see with the uh, the bra on her head bless her so but no it was a good evening i hope everybody enjoyed it hope uh, people have come away with some ideas uh, obviously it doesn't have to be insects there's plenty more things out there that you can go with um but uh yeah, it was different. I was really pleased with the way that they came together in the end and even without putting the backgrounds on, as soon as I was merging them, it was a case of, ooh, I like this, you know, and this one I love. Hannah hates it, but uh, I love it. So I'm not, asking, I'm not going to ask you what it is, but is the next project in planning? Um, Maybe. <laughs> maybe not. <laughs> no, I'm not asking you to divulge because um, that'll be another webinar and another series I've, when it's there. I've got I've got a few things that I'm thinking about. One of them I've been thinking about for two years, and I've kind of half shot it. I just need to get the models to finish it off. But as I said, I really not that. Yeah, I need to get started. Right. Some of it involves bits bits from Russia. Um, yeah, all sorts. Okay, new Russia project. I want to see it. You know, you've told me nine months. So look, what, what are we now? April. So uh, you know, you've got, <laughs> you've got yeah, nine, right. Nine months. Brilliant. Thank you so much, love. Really, uh, you know, I love it when you come on, and I, I, we always get. Uh, you know, I, I love the macro photography that you do, with the exception of the yeah. spiders that I'm, I'm warm into. Um, but thank uh, you for having me. Oh, we we love it, and obviously, like I said, the great, great thing about it now is we've got the date in the diary. So Sam's going to come down, and we're going to actually, you know, see the behind the scenes for all, all, all of this yes. project as well. So we'll be able to show it to them uh, from start to finish, which is great, and the whole process, which is which is another great advantage that we have uh, with the Academy and of yes. course the likes of yourselves contributing to it so uh, from obviously people lighting up the, the thank you board uh, the chat panel with thank you uh, obviously from uh, me to you uh, obviously thanks again for doing this for us we, we love it when you're on uh,